right. And we're live. Welcome to paraglidingtalk.com. I'm your host, Robert Michaels. Glad that you're here. We have a very special show tonight. Kurt Fister's with us. He is a, a paramotor pilot, a paramotor instructor, and he's also a 20-year uh, skydiving uh, pilot. He's got a lot of experience under canopy. He's got all kinds of history in the sport, kind of, uh, in a way, pioneered the sport, if you will. It's all kinds of videos on YouTube. But we're going to pick his brain. You're also joined tonight by uh, Craig Taylor, Anthony Peregringo, and Sean Nafsker. Uh, they're going to be moderating the chat. So appreciate everybody that's logged in. There are tons of people logged on already. We've got 87 people logged in right now. So glad that you're here. I want to go through the order of business very quickly. And I just want to say thanks to the sponsors of the show. Uh, the sponsors include ppgsmoke.com. Go check out the website, Ryan Roberts. Uh, he's created a masterpiece with all kinds of stuff that uh, we can add to our, between smoke machines, uh, strobe lights, lamels, chase cams, even floats. He's made all kinds of great stuff for us and very reasonable price. Uh, he's also uh, the reason why uh, we have uh, Kurt on the show with us tonight. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, show is also sponsored by paramotorprops.com. Go check out Paramotor Props. If you're looking to get a great deal on props, you can check out their website. They have the best deals on the interwebs. And uh, also want to give a shout out to flymyppg.com. If you're in the Michigan area, Mike Cotter and the guys at Fly My PPG will help you to get the training that you need. If you want to get a hold of them, there's a link in the description. And uh, for the rest of the sponsors, we've got some new ones. We're going to share those a little bit later. So appreciate everybody uh, being a part of that. If you want to support the show on Patreon or PayPal, you can do that and keep this show going uh, for the price of a cup of coffee. You can support this show and uh, probably learn something that can keep you from getting hurt or maybe someone else is watching the show and you invested in it. Maybe you don't even get a chance to watch it, but your investment keeps the show going. So thank you for the Patreon supporters and all those who support on PayPal. And uh, thank you for coming on the show. Kurt, how are you guys? And and this is, I'm sorry, you said her, uh, your wife's this, name is? This, is? this is Jill. She's not my wife. This Jill. is my fiance, Jill. Jill, fiance. <laughs> yeah. Jill, uh, glad that you came on the show thank too. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And I want so her to detract from me. Now yeah. I'm just in for She's a a, I brought her in. I wanted a diversion here. That's what that's what I do with my wife too. I'm not the most handsome guy, but I got yeah. charisma he sometimes. Is. Uh, <laughs> well, I I want to start off by saying uh, first of all, thank you for coming on the show and kind of last minute too. I appreciate uh, making that happen. I know you well, recently had a you. tragedy in the family and you uh, you made it work and and so I really appreciate. It. I, like I mentioned earlier, I told you my wife would uh, take the money and put in the super chat. Uh, she did ten dollars awesome no it's not she's take she just took it out of my wallet put it in and gave half of it to, uh, to youtube just well, you could already. always suggest on well you could always suggest live on the air that she could just put it in an envelope and mail it to me and i'd be fine with that too <laughs> we're well, not letting um, you out of that room sir that's right yeah <laughs> you stay in there now you see why i'm in it <laughs> we'll let you we'll let you out at sunrise and sunset just enough time to fly that's it. That's all he can. Throw him a couple more peanuts, Anthony. Yeah, look at he's hiding. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start off with the, the uh, general questions, and then we'll move into some stuff uh, that uh, everybody's been waiting for. Let's dive in with the first question. First of all, how did you get into the sport? I know that you started skydiving, but how did you end up doing paramotoring? Yeah, I started skydiving when I was in my teens, uh, a little bit past my teens. And uh, I was just addicted to it. That was almost 20 years of my life. I did everything from swooping to a little bit of crew. I did some bass. Um, I did every kind of skydiving there was. And I loved it. I loved the canopy ride more than the free fall, though, which was kind of weird. But uh, one time I was uh, looking for a new rig and a new canopy. And I came across this thing online where I was looking at parachutes and looking at different different containers for my for my skydiving and all of a sudden I saw something for sale with a guy with a motor on his back flying a canopy I put two and two together didn't know what it was called he was in West Virginia and he had got it from somebody who brought it over from Europe or whatever and he managed to figure out how to get it in the air excuse me and uh and start flying and his wife just said absolutely not and uh, he had to sell it and I bought it 
uh, there were no, I couldn't find anybody for the first five years of doing this that even knew what it was or how to do it uh, or what was going on with it. I searched all over the place. We didn't have, there was no YouTube videos of it to watch. I basically had to train myself how to fly it. And I think in so doing, I, I actually developed some things that I feel um, maybe they could disagree, but I feel they work a little bit more efficiently than the, than the methods that are taught on the side of a mountain. We can talk about that in a little bit, but I saw this thing. I had to have it. It got crated up. He, he got it to me. It was all gummed up. The carburetors were all gummed up. Um, it was just, uh, it was a mechanical nightmare, but it had a picture of him flying it. So I took a chance and I flew it and he was about the same weight and I had no problem. I pulled off a reverse launch on my very first time. It was about a five or six mile an hour breeze. And after my first flight, which was in the middle of February and about 17 degrees out, uh, I froze my hand off just about, but I had a, a grin from ear to ear going, my God, this is the most incredible thing I've ever experienced. And, uh, this this form of flight is better than anything else that I've ever experienced. So that's where it started with me. And uh, just to, to have something like this, it's just unbelievable that we're born in a time when you think about it, man, since Adam and Eve, how many people, how many men or how many people looked at the skies and said, wow, someday we're going to fly like those birds up there. You know, wouldn't it be great if we could fly? And you look at all the old footage of attempts of flying just in the last, but in the last hundred years, we have flight and we've got something that my God, you can go online and order it and have it shipped to your house and assemble it, take some training and experience something that man has dreamed about since the dawn of time. And we got it in our generation. We're so fortunate. We're so lucky. And uh, I don't know, I'm, it's, uh, you know, over two and a half decades later, I'm still hooked on it. I love it. You can't get enough of it. It just gets in you and becomes the way of life. And I don't know, man, for me, that's where it's at. Did you get any training, um, at all from anyone else? I never took training with anybody. No, my skydiving experience uh, gave me canopy control. I also did crew, which is where when you, I don't know if you're a skydiver, you know anything about skydiving, when you jump out of a plane, you pull out the parachute. And then what we do is we would link up and we hook our feet into the front lines of the other and we just form, do formation. It's called crew, canopy relative work. And uh, I learned canopy control and I figured, okay, I got this thing. And I said, well, this is this is pretty simple. I mean, we've got two steering toggles with basically a Ram air system, even though it's a glider, not a parachute. And uh, we started a little thing about 15 years ago at our field. And uh, if, uh, if somebody calls it a shoot or a kite or, a, or, a, or a, 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 a sail, they got to get me a Starbucks mocha. I don't drink. So they got to get me a Starbucks mocha. The other guys change it to a six pack of beer if you say it. But so like you guys have your cuss jar there, we have our, our correct, pronunciation of the wing but anyways uh um <laughs> i just uh no i had no training man i just figured out how to do it and uh i i really had no problem i've never i've never had a crash i've never had a problem uh i've never had any issues i've never even seen a collapse on a glider other than one that i did intentionally which i don't recommend i went up with a reserve on and i went up pretty high i wanted to know uh because in skydiving we do have a reserve on always and it's easy to cut away and pull out and we would stall our, uh, our parachute all the time. And it's fun to see it thrash around above your head and, and uh, do aerobatics like that. But, you know, we had a cutaway system and then just pull out the second one. So I went up just to see how it reacted. I learned it. I learned how to do. I was already doing, you know, swooping and skydiving. So coming into this sport was actually kind of slow for me, which was the attraction. Flying low, flying slow, doing things like that. And... Uh, yeah, that's uh, I. I didn't have any instruction. I I, I learned my uh, my methods from trial and error, launch techniques, different things to make it work better. How to make it more efficient. Who Who would you call if you had to call somebody about um, training ideas or methods? Brother, I don't know who I would call, and I I, I don't I don't mean to sound arrogant about this, and I, I'm not trying to be, but. I don't, I don't know what I don't know. So I imagine maybe there is something that I don't know about this sport, but I think some of the methods that I've used have uh, versus what I've seen out there, you know, I see other people doing other methods, like uh, for example, you know, torpedoing off the side of a, off the, of a mountain. It's not the way we launch. And I think anybody that's leaning forward in any slight way um, is robbing themselves of efficiency. Uh, looking up at your wing to know what it's doing automatically puts your back with a thrust line 
pushing you towards the sky instead of pushing you towards the ground, keeping you on the ground longer. So torpedoing this, for example. So I teach people how not to do that. And I've developed all these little ways. I don't know who I would call because there was really nobody out there when I started. And I, and, and one by one, they started calling on. There's a lot of guys that I do respect in the sport. Um, a lot of different people. Um, I think there's a lot of great instructors out there. They really are. And uh, sometimes people get the wrong impression from some of my videos that, you know, I think because they're charging so much for training that, uh, you know, that they're a bad guy. That's, that, that's not the case. Um, I do train for free. I don't want anybody to skip it uh, and skip the training. I see a lot of people doing that. I deal with every kind of customer and I just see, I don't want them to do what I had to do. They're not, they may not have the experience. I was also flying fixed wing ultralights. I was flying powered parachutes. So I did have experience, you know, and I flew general aircraft and uh, even took helicopter lessons from time. I've, so I've been in a lot of different aircraft and I still think it was a bad idea that I did it, but I really had no options. That was really, you know, but I, I felt that I had enough spirit experience to know about torque and to know about, you know, how to land this thing. And uh, it was quite an experience. It really was. But I took what I, what I developed and then I found better ways and I developed little things. Uh, but safety has always been my, my number one priority with everything. At what point uh, did you decide that you're ready to train people? You know, I had a, a couple friends that wanted to do it. And when, when manufacturers started popping onto the scene and selling this brand and selling that brand, and some of them were popped up for, you know, they'd come up for a couple of years, they'd run, they'd be out of business. There used to be a company called Dashi Koshu out there, um, Pago Jet, uh, Paramotor, a guy up in New York. Um, there was all these different brands that started popping on a thing. And, and I had friends that wanted to get into it. So finally, finally, we found another resource where to get some more of these things. And uh, they came to me and I started training them. And uh, one by one by one by one, um, it, the sport just kind of grew. And now I'm up to 1,353 students. So, um, so far, it's a perfect safety record. Everybody's alive and kicking. And um, I, I, with, ex with exception of a few scrapes and bruises and things like that, you know, we've, we've got, we're very proud of our safety record here. Um, we don't put a price tag or a time limit on it. And, one thing that we always do is we always want to thank God for everything we do. We do. I know we, we get ridiculed a lot for this, but uh, I do have a strong faith in God. And uh, I accepted him as my savior 35 years ago. I was a professional thief my whole life. I left home as a kid and I ended up, uh, somebody shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with me and I asked Christ to be my savior. And uh, um, I do pray with my students. So I can't take all the credit for being, you know, good at this or anything. I just want to give God the credit. He's been so good to me, you know. So we pray with every student. Sometimes that grabs a little bit of ridicule and some hate mail coming into my emails, but I don't care, man. That's God loves them too. But I just hope someday they'll, they'll come to experience what I have with God. He's, he's been amazing to me, brother. I, I can't take the credit. Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. How many students have come back to you? Come back to me for what? Let's say you go through some training. They're off and they're flying around. They're good to go. How many of them come back to you and say, you know what, hey, I want to get a little more training? Quite a few. Uh, but the ones that don't come back are the ones that kind of scare me a little bit or the ones that think they're, they're ready to go after a few flights. And I, I sit to them uh, and I say, hey, listen, I just, you know, I'm, you know, after seeing this many students, brother, I just want to eat, sleep and breathe every day. I can evaluate stuff that a novice instructor just can't see. And, and with all my years of aviation and it being, it's kind of, I can tell where each guy has his weakness and where he's gonna have problems and whether he's, you know, this is, it's, it's mentally ready for it. And, and if he's just remembering things or if he's gonna have problems, like I'm like 10 steps ahead spotting issues with these guys. And I try to, it's very discouraging to me. A lot of them do come back. I, I couldn't give you a number of, of how many people come back and take more. Some of them come back and they want to learn aerobatics. So I get on the radios with them and I start working them through that. Now, if they want to do in super sure. intense stuff like, uh, uh, yeah, tandem, they come back yeah, they come back and take, learn how to do tandem, you know, um, and, and, and work to that level. But uh, uh, the biggest thing I want them to come back for is, is just if they're feeling like they, like they put it away all winter and they're a little intimidated about it. Believe it or not, there's people that just come on and say, man, I haven't flown it since all winter long. Or, you know, I think winter flying is great, but they put them away for the winter and they come back on they're, they're, they're nervous. And so this is why I keep the door open. This is why I've always offered unlimited training. 
I want them to come back and just having me there and in their ear and talking to them and reviewing some things. I want them to come back as much as they want. Uh, that's my most valuable commodity is my time. I can't, I can't buy that back at the end of my life. And if I'm willing to spend it with them for nothing, they ought to put an importance on that, how important I think it is for them to come back. But some of them just don't do it. They just, they just feel that they're going to do it. And of course they go through a lot more props than anybody. <laughs> so far everybody's alive. And I've taken them to a point where they've at least listened to me enough that uh, I said, Hey, I just, I, you definitely need to come back. You're just not ready. And I, and I foresee trouble. So they do, they do listen to me. That's funny. I, I, my next question is, have you ever had to tell somebody no, that you won't train them? I've, now she can attest to this. We get calls on a continual basis. And I would say this year, maybe 15 to 20, at least 15 to 20 people, even just during the conversation of them wanting to purchase equipment from me, I've turned them down because I've already hear what they're going to be doing and wanting to be doing. And they argue the point of doing that. And they say, well, I've seen this YouTube person do this. And I've seen this YouTube person. I said, you know what? I don't want to be any part of that. And I think you should go buy your equipment somewhere else. You know, they're not going to be safe. They just want to do what they want to do. And they're not going to really take instruction from Kurt. Yeah. And, and we see it point. all the time. I mean, this year, just this year alone, yeah. since January, <laughs> February, March, I mean, you know, I mean, they, we, we just see so many people that I just say, listen, I don't want to have any part of this, dude. But as far as somebody that I, I that's come to me and said, uh, that, that I've turned away. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Just to, have you ever had to tell somebody they they come, they show up, they've got, they buy some gear from you. They want to train and you say, you know what? I can't no. do it. No, I, I've never had that happen. And I, I, I used to a long time ago, I, I had worked with a, 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 a small sect of uh, wounded warriors and guys that came in, no legs. Some people that came in uh, that were paralyzed and different things. I, I like to overcome these things. Um, we've even had a guy excuse me, I made one video. He had a, he, had, he came in, he didn't tell me, but he had a, he had a uh, prosthetic leg. And that's not the first guy that's done this, but his leg kept falling off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we duct taped it on. It was his idea. And I said, you know, if you would have told me this, we modify like our trike. We have the, we we're exclusive dealers for a specific trike. Am I allowed to mention the name? Of it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. I didn't know if I'm allowed to say that, but it's, uh, oh, okay. it's called the fly pod trike. We're exclusive dealers for it. And it self steers. Um, it, it self-corrects. And so we're able to train guys that have no legs that are wounded, that are paraplegic. And, but for anybody, whether it's our military, if they've been wounded, or if it's a guy that just, you know, I had one guy, one leg did not work. He had a stroke. One leg did not work. Another guy had, he was, uh, uh, both legs were working. He, he, he took a nap on his couch. He woke up an, an hour later and he was paralyzed for the rest of his life. He doesn't even know, they don't even know why it happened. And so he, we made, we'll modify their equipment any way we have to for free to, to make sure that they can fly. I don't like telling somebody they can't live their dream, but there, there has only been two people that I have said, I, I don't, I want you to stop. I, I even said to the wife, he, he shouldn't be doing this. This is not for him. It got to the point where I literally after, after weeks of, getting nowhere with the person and they were not remembering anything, even the setup or anything. I didn't feel comfortable with them. And especially when they had their first flight and completely blurred me out of everything that they stay, you know, for example, I had a guy sit through endless ground schooling. He, he said, uh, as uh, we let people come in any time of the week for their training. So as new people came in, he sat in on their ground schooling and he must've sat in on 10 ground schools. Uh, he's watched over 50 to 60 flights. He's seen me do over 20 to 30 demonstration flights. Cause I like to demonstrate a flight to a guy right in front of me. That's part of the thing that I do for my students. I could see it. I'm literally talking to them while I'm doing it, coming in for landings. I go, okay, watch my hands and do this. So he sat there watching us and I just didn't feel comfortable putting him in the air until he was finally memorizing the setup, which was really easy, but he just wasn't getting, it. it's not his fault. He's just, he's an older guy. And people just learn like that. But on his first flight, it was absolutely horrendous, dude. It was the most 10 minutes of terror that I've ever experienced in my life. I would have taken everything I own and liquidated it and put it into a pile of money here against a $5 bill that he was going to die. I could not get this guy mentally in the ground. Relax, calm down, just listen, let it fly, 
hands up, hands up, hands up. Throughout. I mean, I, he's all over the place. He was up, down, uh, high G spiral diving, almost hitting the ground. Hands up, hands up, full throttle, hands up, full throttle. Almost flew into my house. And then he flew off where I couldn't see him. And when I finally got him, it was, dude, it was the most horrendous thing to tell you the story of it. Uh, and then when I finally got him back and I said, what happened? Did we lose radio control? And, uh, and he said, no, he said, I hear you. And I said, so you heard me that entire time? Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I went off. I was, I, I was screaming him at the time. I'm like, I, and I had to come back and apologize to him later. I felt bad for yelling at him, but I just went off. I had so much adrenaline pumping through me. I, I would have banked everything. Is that I, and I told his wife, I said, listen, if he wants to fly this thing again, you need to cut it up. And she says, I, you know, I told him, I told him, and she was, she was, uh, uh, Russian, and she says, I tell him not to fly. I tell him not to fly. I, he no, he no remember anything. I tell him when he got tears are coming down her eyes. Oh my God. When he was up and all this was happening, my students behind me, several of them dropped to their knees and were crying and they were praying and they'd say, God, please, please help him, Lord. And, uh, and they started oh praying. I think that's the only reason he got through it. And the wife was just a basket case. And I was shaking, man. I said, I, I just, uh, I thought that was going to be a fatality. I just, no matter how calm I was in the radio, I couldn't get him under control. And I finally did and got him back. And I said, this isn't for you, dude. I'm telling you, that's the only person I've ever had. There's one guy I said, I, it's not for you. And it, it just wasn't for him. And I really, I hope I, I never heard from him again. He was kind of offended that I said that, but I said, you came to me because you trusted my experience. And I'm telling you, you're just not, you have no situational awareness. And this is going to, I believe this is going to take your life. I really do. Brutal. And I said, I, I'd, I'd really love you to stop doing this and, uh, and uh, you know, just back it off. So I never heard from him again. I don't, he, he disagreed with me, but he went on. I mean, even this older guy is almost 80 years old. Some people have strong opinion, opinions about you. Uh, what do you say to those who don't agree with your methods? Try my methods out. If, if you find something that works better, share it with me. I, I'd love to pass it on to the sport. And if I, if I, I'm not beyond learning anything, but I haven't found methods like for launch techniques and, and things like that. But if you got something better, bring it in. I'd love to know about it. Uh, but so far everything's working and I got 1,353 people in a perfect safety record. So if it ain't broke, why fix it? Um, I've got stuff that I believe is efficient. See, if you watch some of my videos, which, you know, they're not professionally done. Sometimes I do them with my cell phone or whatever, but what I'm trying to teach and in, in all of my videos, I'm not spending my time flying and doing this and doing that. I'm trying to teach, I'm trying to get you to teach. I mean, there's some stupid videos in there that I just put out for fun, but like taking my dog up or whatever. But um, I, I want you to learn something, a technique that's going to help you be safer and how do you have more success with less broken props and stuff, especially for the foot launchers. I have one called to look or not to look where it teaches you to look up at your wing, see what it's doing before you take the throttle. Just treat it like it's kiting. I try to get their mind in the right frame, but if there's a better way, I want to know what it is. You know, I, I, I'm fine with them teaching anyways, but you know, it, it's funny you mentioned that. I was, at a, I was at a field one time. Let me give you this example. Um, I was at a field down in Florida and I was down there to train a guy and it wasn't my normal field for training out of. It was down by Fort Lauderdale. And there was a guy out in the field when I showed up in the field with my student and he'd only started the day before, but we, I went to this other field because I remembered it. And there was a guy there practicing his kiting. Okay. His instructor wasn't there yet. He's got the wing laid out in front of him. He's got the training harness on. He's got the two risers extended. He walks over to the, he walks over to the, to the glider and he just ties straight in and he gets the toggles in his hand. And he's grabbing the A-lines and he's doing a reverse launch and he's just practice bringing the wing up and controlling it and keeping level. Well, that's not how it's going to be. That's not how it's going to be when you're actually launching. You need the lines crossed so that when it does come up, you can turn around. And so he's got opposite hands running the toggles. And I just couldn't help seeing him do that because he's really struggling with it. Even with it straight on, he was still struggling. So when he saw the, his right side coming up faster than the left, he pulled a little bit of the right brake to drop it back down. And the left side comes up, but he pulls the left. He's trying to get it to fly level. And I said, here's the problem with what you're doing. I said, you're developing muscle memory that's going to burn into your head. But that's not the way it's going to be when you're launching and pulling off a reverse launch. You're going to cross those lines, connect them up, and it's going to be opposite. The right hand's going to control the left side of the wing. 
the left hand's going to draw the right side of the wing. I said, well, what you're doing is counterproductive. You're going to have to relearn it all over again. You're actually, you're actually hurting yourself. And about that time, he goes, this is the way my instructor told me to do this. I said, who's your instructor? And I knew the guy and I liked the guy and I, I didn't want to say anything. I mean, I just walked away and I said, well, if that's what he's doing, I'm just going to let him work with you. I says, but I teach a little bit. I know it's, it's like I, I tiptoe around because I don't want to piss anybody off. Other people, I don't mind pissing off. But, uh, you know, there's some people that need to be pissed off because they're, they're kind of ruining the sport. But uh, I take a lot of time in, in safety and, in, and these techniques. And I was just trying to help him in a way. When he showed up, I said to the guy, I said, hey, I said, I says, uh, your guy out there. And so my guy goes out. My guy's been there for a day. He's practicing his kiting, too, because he's going that night he's going to make his first launch. My guy's popping his wing up. He doesn't know he's one of my students. He's popping it up. He's turning around. He's walking with it. He's looking at the wing. He's turning back, facing it. His other guy had been had been practicing for over a week and a half now, and still, even straight on, was unable to control that wing. And he goes, so uh, who's your buddy here? How long has he been flying? I says, he hasn't flown yet. He's going to make his first flight tonight. And I could see the lump in his throat. You know, so... You know, when, when other instructors are teaching stuff, I, I see it so many times that they can improve their, their, their techniques for their students. One of the things I can't stand is the, the, they set up their wing, they're going to do a forward launch. This is just some examples of what I'm talking about. And I'll tell you what I do um, to kind of answer your questions. You see them connect up and I see so many, including instructors, use this technique where they, it's a zero wind day. They got a wing behind them. So, and they're doing a forward launch. They walk back in about 10 feet and get a running start. Absolutely ridiculous. Because when those A-lines hit, they collapse slightly. And there's all this dead, it, it's not that it doesn't work and get up there, but there's this dead zone where the cells kind of collapse or the wing doesn't, it, uh, it doesn't inflate evenly because the, the, the open mouth, the open cells are half the size, so it can't play. But I'll just, I'll just walk to the end of mine, and I just walk forward fast. And that way, the cells don't impact and, and close really quick. It doesn't distort the wing, and it just inflates the wing is faster than it normally would with less effort. So I'm teaching guys less effort, less work. And when you got a motor on your back, even if it's the lightest one, like 40 pounds, and you've got two gallons of fuel in there, you know, you got 50 some pounds on your back. You don't want to, you want efficiency, you know? So that's some of the stuff I teach, but if there's a better way, man, I want to know about it. Bring it in. I'm not offended by somebody trying to show me something. And I'm not, you know, I'm always willing to learn something, but to, to answer your question, I don't know who I would call, you know, Scotty, <clears throat> Scotty Flintstone in the chat. He just donated $2 in the super chat. And he said, does he have any mountain paragliding launches? I have done some very little. Um, I've done just a little bunny hills and stuff like that. I did it in Florida. Um, there was a hill down in Fort Lauderdale where this field was. I was just telling you about it. I did some over there. Um, I've done some things in Utah uh, off of some big hills out there with just my training harness, just some bunny hills and stuff like that. Um, some of my students have gone on to do regular paragliding. Dominic Vidantonio and Tim Garvey and some of my other guys have, uh, have really gotten into. Britton Shaw is one of my students. Uh, he's out in Fort Smith, Arkansas. He's an instructor. Um, he, he went on to be like a, like, I guess, set records for thermaling. So there's, you know, I've done a little bit of that, but, uh, I I'm really not interested. I just love motoring, man. I don't want I don't like flying in thermals. I really don't care for it. Um, I like the smoothness of the morning flights, the evening flights or the beach flights. Then you can fly all day. I just, I don't care for stuff like that. And you know what? I've never in all this time, I've never had a collapse on a glider ever, never had one. And I enjoy that. I mean, they're not fun. Who wants one? We want to give something away on the show. Uh, it's that time. Yes. Sean. Sweet. Can Sean. I play? Sean is, yep, your name's in there. Uh, if you've been in the chat, your name's in there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And let We've me tell you something. You two. 23 people are watching. YouTube has been kicking me in the groin. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Sean. And you're, what I mean by this is the chat has been freezing. I'm going to take care of you, Sean, for these last two shows. He has literally had to write down everybody's name well, or click and drag into this yes. wheel. And this is so impressive 200, here, folks. 250 people. 250 people. Now, I can only put 200 people in here. So here is the list 
of names of all the people that have been in the chat right By the here. way, this, this yeah. part of the show. I've been uh, a busy dude here. Now you see why I've been so quiet and disappearing because I'm losing, I'm pulling my hair out like, oh. <laughs> This is the, wow. the uh, this wheel, this the spin of the wheel tonight is uh, brought to you by Nebraska PPG, Josh, Josh Bowden. Uh, he That's runs right. a school in Nebraska. And if you're interested in getting some top-notch training, you sign up with Josh and his team today. There's a link in the description. Thank you, Josh, for the wonderful wheel that we're going to spin today. We're going to give something away. What are we giving away before we uh, click uh, spin? You tell me, Robert. You're the host. How about a chase cam? Chase Cam it is. How All about right. a brand new car? A yeah. brand new car. <laughs> We're doing a PPG does smoke Ryan chase know cam. He's donating another chase cam. What's that? Wanna, does Ryan know he's donating another chase cam? No, no, this one's actually mine. Oh. I want to yeah, set a Ginsu. I want the Ginsu's to come back. I want the Ginsu nine. <laughs> Where's the Ginsu's, man? <laughs> All right, here we go. The wind is All right, go for it. The wheel is deal. spinning. Here we go. I'm gonna have to wow. ask Ryan how much it costs Look to ship those this. things. This is a lot of oh. in the chat, Robert. Oh. One eyed Willie. One eyed Willie. <laughs> one -eyed Willie. <laughs> Congratulations, one eyed Willie. I knew eventually you would win something, and you have. One eyed Willie. One eyed Willie. Congratulations. You are the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Reach out to me in the chat. Go to paraglidingtalk.com. That's paraglidingtalk.com. Go check out that website. There's a, there's a sign-up thing that says contact. So hit the contact button. Put your information in there. Let Good me know job, you one -eyed Willie. Can. And One-Eyed <laughs> Willie is the winner, winner. Chicken Congratulations. Day. Congratulations. Um, thank you, by the way, for uh, the sponsors that sponsor the show. Another sponsor is Tri-State Skywalkers. If you're in the Indiana, Kentucky, or Ohio area, you can reach out to Brandon McLeod and join a flying club. It'll help you grow in the sport and make you a safer pilot. If you're interested in joining the Tri-State Skywalkers, you can follow the link in the description. And um, it's pretty awesome, man. It's a cool thing. And uh, to answer your question, Slow Days, did you ever get the chase cam from 1UP? I did, and that's the one I'm giving away tonight. Thank you, Slow Days. Um, yeah, we've got all kinds of uh, people that have uh, come in to the sport recently. There's all kinds of uh, guys that have been in for, you know, two and three years now. Um, I'm one of the guys, look at my wife, another four ninety nine. Thanks, babe. I did see you. I did see you. She just puts the, she doesn't say anything. She just puts $4. Uh, if you, if you have a really burning, uh, a burning question that you want to ask, um, you can uh, put some money on it. If, if it's that important to you. Uh, it's funny because uh, we, we've got these guys coming in, you know, left and right two, three years. The question is, uh, what advice do you offer the semi-seasoned pilot? You've been in the sport for a long time now. What do you say to those guys that have they've got a, a few years under their belt? What would I say to them? Yeah. I'd say don't let your britches get too big. I'd say just take it easy, man, and enjoy the sport and don't get pushed down the road so hard that you're uh, making bad decisions. That's the one thing I always start to you, I start to see complacency with safety. And uh, that's what I'm all about, brother. I just I guess uh, I guess uh, uh, I guess that's the main thing I would say is I, I see people going down a road of getting yanked into doing other stuff that, you know, gets questionable. Sometimes they do things that uh, that I don't think they should be doing. And uh, I just hate to see people get sucked into that. Don't let, don't get complacent with the gravity still going to work. She's still the same girl I knew when I was a teenager. She'll lure you in and look awful sexy, but she'll smack you hard and drop you down. And it'll take you by surprise because you become so. Yeah. You know, I, I think she gets worse as you get older, actually. She's a nasty looking thing. She looks attractive, <laughs> but she's nasty. <laughs> But that's the one thing that I would tell people. Just don't go down that road, man. Just enjoy the – live to fly another day. I hate it when somebody says, oh, he died doing what he loves. Really? I'd rather keep doing what I love. Yeah. And not die. And not die, yeah. Yeah. I'm sick of watching people smack into the deck, and, and every one of them could have been avoided. Every time I'm looking on YouTube and I see another death, I mean, it just makes the sport look like horrendous. But it's all bad decisions. It's all just stupid. It's just life weeding out stupid. And I always, oh, pray for him. He's, you know, he was in a paragliding accident. I said, no, no, he wasn't. Yeah, he was. I just saw it on YouTube. He's, he's dead. 
I'm like, no, it wasn't a paragliding accident. It was a paragliding inevitable because he's stupid. He's being stupid. He's flying in conditions he shouldn't be flying in. He's flying, doing things beyond his skill level. He's flying in places he shouldn't be flying. And that's why he's dead. And every year somebody dies. And I look at these accidents and they could have been avoided. You didn't have to die doing what you love. You could have lived to fly and keep on doing it. So I don't know. That's why we have this show. Yeah. I exactly. have a video have called the show. urge of stupidity and you wouldn't believe how many students that I have that come in here. And even while they're in here and I'll, I'll give one as an example, uh, I don't mention any names, Frank, but anyways, uh, he was, uh, he come in and he looked exactly like, what was that? Like Will Ferrell. Remember? <laughs> he looked exactly like Will Ferrell. This guy was about 270 pounds. So he looked like a big giant Will Ferrell. He shows up with this, it was Simonini is a great motor, but he showed up with this old one on an old Lamouette. It's an old brand that used to be out there. Probably, be- how old are you? <laughs> it's probably before you were born. There was 40. a 40. Oh no, you're, you look, you look young. <laughs> you look Thank good. you. All right. Yeah. So I thought maybe late twenties or something, but anyways, uh, um, he shows up with this Lamouette. He shows up with this Lamouette trike and he shows up with a medium wing and he's 260, 280 pounds. And he, if they don't buy equipment from me, I charge a thousand dollars because I just can't give free training to people that didn't come through us and buy their equipment. If they buy equipment through us. I give them unlimited training for life. I don't want them to go home and train their family. So I train their entire family for free. Anybody they bring in from their family, I'll train. I'll spend as much time. It's fine. I don't want them to go home and teach them something. They're not going to see what I'll see or try to put a helmet on their kid or something like that and send them up. I'd rather be in charge of that and doing that. I'm willing to spend the time. This guy, he came in and I charged the thousand dollars and I says, and he, so he comes in, he gives me the thousand dollars. He unloads his machine from his car. And when I saw what he has, and I saw the size of this pile, I said, brother, I says, this, uh, this ain't going to fly. You'll need to get some other gear. I said, this is, you need something stronger. And, you know, he, he said, oh, so you're not going to try to, you're going to try to sell me gear now. I said, no, no, I'm not trying to sell you gear. I'm trying to tell you, I can't take your thousand bucks, dude. It, it, I said, this ain't going to fly. He says, it'll fly me. I said, no, it won't fly you. I says, he says, the guy that I bought it from says, it'll fly me. I'm going to take the training. I came all the way down. I said, okay, give me the thousand bucks. So I took the thousand bucks and every day this guy argued about the weather. I mean, it was, it was changing. There was stuff happening in the morning. It just wasn't conducive. We did all the ground schooling with it. We did everything with him. He was doing the trike. This thing couldn't even move him, dude. He was 260, between 260, 280 pounds. And it couldn't even move him. It had these little tiny wheels on it about the size of like, uh, push lawnmower wheels and we're trying to take off of you know in grass with these things it, it wouldn't even move them hardly but uh, he got to the point where he just argued every time when it was a time to even attempt flying and I finally just said Lude, listen dude I said I don't want to have any part of this I says I'm just going to give you your money back I want you to take it and just go on out of here I says because this is it's not going to fly I can't even get you out there we can't even get you going and this is the kind of stuff that I deal with man all the time you know <clears throat> we got a question in the chat from a guy named Anthony Vela. He's on YouTube. Mm-hmm. His question is, what do you love most about Anthony Vela's videos? And never who seen is one. that is not an option. I've never seen one. I don't, I really don't watch a lot of videos. Um, I <laughs> honestly, I, I tell him. I mean, yeah. how, how often do you see me watching a, a video yeah, about? You don't have time. He's so busy training and taking calls, and yeah. We don't have time. I really, honestly, don't have time. I don't. I don't watch a lot of other videos. They'll pop up every now and then, um, and I see him, but I, I don't know who Anthony Vela is, to be honest with you. I want to uh, real quick. There is a um, an organization. It's called Resurgence PPG. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, and what they do is they sponsor wounded warriors, uh, veterans, That's awesome. and it's a 501 C three, uh, they're actually a, a sponsor of the show as well. Awesome. Uh, awesome. one of the guys wants to give away a t-shirt. So can we spin the wheel again, Sean? Is yeah. that possible? We can, we can do that. Um, now where the, <laughs> the names were left off at is where the names are. I mean, there's totally had, fine. The wheel anybody else? of destiny. Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Spin All the right, here destiny. we go. We're spinning. Now, if you want to support Resurgence PPG, you can go to their website. It's uh, resurgenceppg.com, and uh, they're trying to sponsor 20 candidates. We have a winner. Uh, The suspense is killing us. That's me. We have to spin again. (laughs) 
Who, who's giving oh, that? There we go. It was blank. It's a, it's a respin. It's on a blank. It's a respin. Mark A. Minson donated $10 and he said, what do you love most about Anthony Vela's videos? Best paramotor videos produced. Keep it up, buddy. Scott Starbeck. <laughs> Scott, Scar Scott Starbeck. Scott Starbeck. Congratulations. I'd like to, to thank uh, Paramotor Crazy for donating that. Yes. Uh, to, to, you know, that to, to go to research his PPG. You know, good stuff. Oh my gosh, I I do think it's hilarious that people are donating into the super chat just to get their comment. This is why we have super chat. I think it's to make my job like harder this. because then it's a surprise, and then I have to go back and then get all the other names that I didn't have added to the list already that wouldn't fit because we're already <laughs> at two hundred names. Uh, what's the guy's <laughs> name? Scott? What? I missed it. Uh, really? Starbet. Starbeck, yeah, S Starbeck. S C O T S T A R B E C K. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so Scott, if you're still listening, uh, uh, reach out to me, and or you can reach out directly to David Wolf on Facebook. Um, just message me on paraglidingtalk.com website, and then go to the um, contact form, and then. Uh, let me know that you won the shirt and I'll get you in contact with uh, David. They actually have a show too. It's um, the uh, Our it's on edition. Sunday nights at uh, eight, eight o'clock. Is it eight? Are you eight. asking? It's five o'clock my time. Are, are you asking, Robert? Yeah, I can't remember. Is it, I'm at it's church 8, when that 8, happens. 8, yeah. So I can't, yeah, I can't watch not it. Not a bad place to be. Yeah. yeah, I we we have church on Sunday nights, and then so I'm I'm sometimes it'll pop up on my phone, and I'm like, oh man, I want to watch that show. But, I'd uh, say that's a good excuse. That's, that's a good excuse. That's, yeah, <laughs> uh, reach out to them, by the way, um, and they they're big proponents for Resurgence PPG. They have a great show too. Awesome, awesome time Sunday nights. Um, do you have any regrets, Kurt? About what? Yeah. Let's move right to the next question. <laughs> Tell us about a time when you were out of control, maybe a time that you had a close call and what were your takeaways? I've only had one issue happen in life with powered paragliding. And I did, I did make it to the ground and I walked away unscathed, but I had a wing reach the end of its life. I was test flying it as I usually did for people that came in. And this wing fooled me. I don't, I, at that time, it was kind of in the beginning, I wasn't telling people, you know, they would bring equipment in. I would kind of inspect it myself, look at it, get their motors running for them. They would come in with all sorts of contraptions and stuff. But uh, this wing was beyond its shelf life, man. And uh, I flew it and I fell about a half a mile out of the sky. And then, amazingly, I walked away from it. But uh, from that point on, I just started, if anybody's going to bring in anything used, I, they have to show me a current inspection sheet. I want stuff inspected, line tested, strength tested, all the stitching <laughs> gone over, the porosity, everything, and find one of those people that do that in the country that's got a reputation for doing quality inspections and, and send your wing off and get that inspected before you come in for training. Uh, my regret was that I didn't check this out and I was stupid enough to fly his equipment. That's the only thing I've ever had happen. I've never had a near miss with anything. Cause I just, I think things through and I just, I can't, I wish I could say I had something exciting to tell you, but I've never had an issue. What's your go-to for uh, weather? You know what? I use a really simple method. Uh, first of all, I use weather bug. I like it. It's just got little sensors all over the place. Uh, it's real easy to read cause I'm an idiot and I don't like looking at graphs and charts and this and that. So I just like something really simple like me. And uh, but after being uh, a skydiver and, and doing this for as long as I have been and, and just flying fixed wing ultralights and powered parachutes and different things like that, you're going to go outside and you're going to do a last minute evaluation. I feel it. I just you just after you're doing this for so long, you're going to start to feel something happen. You'll know you look at the sky, you know, you it's it's not it's not rocket science, but I, I stick to my rules. I stick to mornings and evening flights only. And even them, I weed them out by what I'm feeling. Um, if I'm foot launching, I'm pre-kiting my wing to find out. It tells me 
what's going on up there. I can see directional change. I can, I can look at the, you just start reading all this stuff. And this is kind of what I try to inbreed or uh, inbreed into my, into my students when they come in, just get a feel for that weather, get out there and do it. Check your weather, of course, look to see if there's a storm front coming or this coming, or if there's something that's going to be possibly producing a gust front. But, um, Man, I just, uh, I, I go to Weatherbug, it's simple. I use that and then I just go outside and evaluate if I like what I see and I like what I feel. And there's only been a few times where it fooled me and I got up and there was a layer of crap up there that I just said, wow, this is unbelievable. There's no, and I almost always fly before my students do because I don't, I want their first experiences not to be ones that are terrifying. I want them to fall in love with the sport like I have. And so I literally 99.9% .9 of the time I will, unless it's absolutely perfect. And I got a lot of students and I I'm dead sure of it, but I almost always test out the air for them. I go up at every level and I just make sure that they're going to be flying in something comfortable for their first, for their first time. And some people have gotten mad about that. Some people have gotten mad. They're like, uh, you know, um, we, we, I really want to fly. It doesn't seem that bad. I said, yeah, but it's a different animal up there. I says, I, I really honestly don't want you flying in that. You don't want to fly. I says it was more unstable than, than, I mean, I'm sure you've been up in the sky when you felt that big uh, down on the ground, people are going, wow, it's so nice. It's so beautiful. But yeah. up there it was a totally different animal. I'm a free flight pilot. So um, yeah. every time I fly, it's scary. Yeah. <laughs> until I, until I get a motor, I'll just have to be satisfied with that. No, yeah. I, I love free flight. It's, it's amazing. Put an airplane on your back, hike up a hill, go fly and you never know yeah. where you're going to end up. It's great. It's yeah. I think that it's, it's very intriguing. It's, it's, uh, I I've done it. I just, uh, I don't know. I just get more of a thrill out of, uh, out of motoring. I think, I think it's great that people love to love the free fly. I'm all about any kind of flight really, to be honest with you. I'll, I've been intrigued with it since I was a little kid. I couldn't even play sports. My parents would try to get me into soccer and little league and this and that. And I'd be out in the fields staring up at the skies, watching planes go over. I was just enamored with flight yeah. from day one. Yeah, same and so here. it's it's crazy. You have dreams about flying where you just lift off in your dreams. <laughs> I have yeah, many times. Uh I've got uh, a guy named UFO Powered Paragliders in the chat. He said, Kurt, remember that gopher turtle hill I hit in your PPG training field that day. I saw you training your students doing 360 foot drag, Rodman Gomez. Hey Rod, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, I remember you. I miss you, man. You need to come down and see me sometime. I'm down in Florida all winter long, and I'm over in Deltona. Come on in and see me. I'd love to see you, dude. He, he donated twenty bucks to the show. I appreciate. I do that. remember that. He's a great guy. I really like Rod. Yeah. Also, do uh, you know Mark Honeycutt? You familiar with him on YouTube? I've heard his name. I've seen a couple of his videos. I don't. Yeah. I don't follow him or anything. I've heard him. He's in the chat and. Um, yep. He donated two dollars, and uh, his question was, "Do you think Mark Honeycutt is cute?" Man, I tell you what, I, I, I I'm gonna have to agree. That's a han that is a handsome man. Handsome man. <laughs> Out of control. Out of control. I wish past, I had hair. Um, you've had strong opinions about instructors that charge for training. Uh, would you say that instructors that charge for training are doing something wrong? No, I don't. I don't do that. In fact, if you want, there's one of my videos to do it. I don't, I don't like that kind of a price tag on it or a time limit. Um, I know time is money. I, and in my one video that I said, I said, they're not a bad guy because they're charging. They're trying to make a living out of it. I understand that. And they're trying to do it. I know in this sport, it's, it's, it's cutthroat and everybody's, things are going to get rich off. And it's not like that. There's a lot of time. There's a lot of dedication. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of responsibility that goes into keeping somebody alive. I mean, uh, they just want to jump on the, the wagon, but not everybody that charges is bad. I just, what I see on a continual basis is people skipping the training because it's so stinking expensive. And I don't like that. Um, I just don't like that. I, I don't want to have anything in the way of them. And I, there's so many kids out there that don't have a, a pocket deep enough to fork out 3,500 bucks. And so I know a lot of people really get pissed off because I trade for free. But when I started Flight Junkies at that time, I had like five different companies that God blessed me with. And they, they were all doing really good. Everything's gone well. God's blessed me beyond what I need. Um, and so I didn't want to charge for training. I just in love with the sport. If they bought equipment from me, that's good enough. In fact, for the first 10 years of training, I was training, even if they didn't buy anything from me, I was training free of charge 
And I would even go to where their state, which is something I still do. I still go to other states and train somebody. If they can't come to me, they get me an airline ticket and a dirty old couch to sleep on. And I actually go to where they're at and I'll train them where they're at. And I'll come out for five days. And that's a lot of work for me. I got to find somebody to watch my dogs do this. I have other companies that I own. So, you know, I can't be at home to kind of oversee them and do that. And I got to be away from family and stuff. So it's kind of expense, but if that's their only way, because their wife, you know, has to have care at night or they can't leave their farm or they can't do this. They're, they're on the borderline saying, Hey, I can't, I, I can't find an instructor near me and I can't leave. I'm kind of in a catch 22. I'm like, well, I'm coming out. I'm going to come out there and try to get me an airline ticket and, and uh, I'll come pick them up. So I've got a car sitting at the airport and, and uh, I'm going to be paying on, you know, doing that. I don't make them do that. I don't make them feed me. I don't make them do anything else, but I don't want them to skip the training. And yeah. so that's what I do. Uh, there's two or two, yep, two brand new sponsors that we have. I do want to say thanks to uh, iFly Indiana Powered Paragliding. If you're interested in flying paramotors, no better place to get proper training than iFlyIndiana.com. Uh, Kevin and his team will get your feet off the ground. Uh, the show is also brought to you by Lone Star Paramotor. They're a new sponsor. Really appreciate you guys. Uh, if you're in the Lone Star state of Texas, reach out to Ron Turan and his team for world class training at LoneStarParamotor.com. And uh, the most recent um, uh, sponsor of the show, which is really near and dear to my heart, is uh, Tory Pines Glider Port. So this show is brought to you by Tory Pines Glider Port. If you want to learn how to free fly in the most beautiful place in the United States, reach out to Max Marion or any of the guys at flytory.com. Uh, it's such an awesome website. They've got all kinds of good uh, resources on there and it's local. So it's my spot it's where I like to fly a lot. Uh, my my main spot is Blossom, obviously, but uh, Tory Pines Glider Port. So I appreciate the sponsorship and supporting the show. Thank you uh, for that. Uh, another question I do have for you is, uh, what do you say to the guy who wants to buy gear but doesn't want to train with Flight Junkie? I'll ship their gear. They're, they can tell me who they want to train with. I'll ship their gear over to their instructor. I don't want somebody to go back and not train himself and um, – that's fine with me. I just want to know that they got good training. I'm not going to, and there's been times that people want me to ship their gear overseas or uh, South America or this and that, and I can have it shipped there, but they don't have any kind of training set up. If they've got training set up, I'm fine with that, but I don't know why they would want to, if they want to pay 3,500 bucks to somebody or come to somebody that's willing to spend as much time with them for free, it's there for them. So I don't have that happen too much. Um, you know, I'm not a know-it-all, but I know quite a bit about this sport. And I know how to get people in the air safely and I get them down safely. So um, I don't know if they, if they, if they're, as long as they're going to do that, but there has been a couple of times that I can remember that I knew they were going to, I knew they were going to launch themselves and they just didn't want to take the time to even drive five or 10 hours to come see me. And, uh, you know, Jill's seen this too. We, we just turn them down. We just say, you know, be best if you go buy your equipment somewhere else and, and do that. You know, I love Fresh Breeze because it, it's just honestly, it's, I went through a nightmare of other equipment and I just, it's, it's been the most dependable unit that I've ever found. There's been little things here and there, but Fresh Breeze is so fast to take care of a situation that comes up. We had an ignition problem. We had a bad batch of ignitions come through last year and man, Fresh Breeze jumped right on it, took care of them, was sending out new ignitions to the guys. It's an amazing company. It's why they've been out there so long. They're the oldest paramotor coming. They just... They run easy. They start easy. They have features that aren't found on the other brands, which I tell people about in my, in my stuff. So if they get equipment from me, they get unlimited training. I don't see why they'd want to go anywhere else, but if they do, I, I, I want to know that they're going to be trained. And if, if they don't, I'll, I'll just turn them down. Mark Amundsen asked, do you think wings are priced correctly? Boy, I'll tell you what, that's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you, did you hear you did the, 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 the are. <laughs> mine are really good price, uh, i nice. sell them pretty 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 They're inexpensive yeah package, but yeah really good price. and uh does jill but, fly uh jill flies with me i fly tandem with kurt yeah i'm gonna yeah, make my first flight soon oh you she's, are gonna do it yes you know it's a video we'll she's just video. waiting she's taking her time but i tell you what she's she knows every aspect of doing the setup she's my she has been my right hand man, beautiful man. <laughs> but uh, she's been my right hand man uh, on this thing. She she keeps everything running like clockwork around here too. I'm I'm scatterbrained with all sorts of stuff. Like who's going to be coming in for training? She's got everything organized, and she was a registered nurse for 
20 years, 23 years. So she does everything by the book and I couldn't be more blessed to have her in my life and uh, helping out with Fly Chuck because she gets out there and the ladies come hang out with her and they love it. We're getting a lot more women into the sport now and she's going to be making her first flight when we get, she, she was going to do it down here. She's no, I really want to make it off of our home in, in Ohio. We live on our private airfield. It's Carver's field. It's kind of a famous place. A lot of students have been trained there. It's a 30 acre uh, airfield that we live on and she wants to make her first flight there. So that's going to be this summer, but my God, she, she can jump in it right now and go up and fly it. She honestly, I don't believe she even needs me to do the whole setup, everything. She knows how to do it all. And she's helping out with students. So it's been awesome. So you'll be watching that video. She'll be making her first flight. We're going to be proud of her. One of my uh, uh, favorite moderators is uh, Rip Man Riding. And uh, he asked earlier in the chat, what do you think about SIVs? Uh, I think they're good. I think people should go out and do it. If they're going to get into the next step, I think they should go out and, you know, I don't spend a lot of time doing that. I got so many new students coming in that if they're going to go into some, uh, some real intense, uh, uh, flying, I think they should go out and get with a paraglider, get with you guys and go through that. Uh, Yankee from, uh, it used to be Yankee and SE one Yankee paramotor. Uh, he asked this question and he donated $2 to the chat. He said, uh, Kurt attempted to intervene in my self training for my safety. And I respect him for that, but my decision had nothing to do with the cost. Does he know why new Smyrna beach outlawed PPG from the beaches? That is a great question. And that's where I live. I live down here by new Smyrna beach and Daytona beach. I'm 20 minutes from both. Um, let me tell you what, what happens to, to the entire coast of Florida. And I've been flying down to Florida. I've been a snowbird for over 20 years now. And I do six months in Ohio and six months in Florida. And I've owned companies in both. So I go back and forth. And that's how I started becoming a snowbird. And my other companies don't, do, don't require me to be there. And I started flying off these beaches. And we used to be able to fly off of Siesta Key Beach. We used to, um, I, I was flying all, all over the beaches down here. What happens is those spots start be as the sport started growing and people start uh, seeing those spots for for flying. They come down here from their state. Um, they just don't respect other people, brother. They're they're doing wing overs ten feet over their head on a beach. Uh, they're driving the uh, uh, the lifeguards crazy. Uh, the police beach patrol has to stop them and tell. And pretty soon what they do is they get so fed up with the tourists complaining about this and, you know, a noise, some noisy paramotor coming over their head or blowing sand their way or just down and near scaring them that they've actually made ordinance now for all of these beaches in Volusia County, uh, over by Siesta Key. I used to fly off it every morning. I used to live Siesta Key Beach, uh, one of the most beautiful beaches. I was doing tandems every day off the beach and they put a kibosh on that because people have come down and just act like idiots and go home. They made their YouTube video. They showed them doing this, doing that. I used to, one of my first flights, you can watch it. I still had hair in the video. It's one of my oldest videos I kept up, but I'd been flying for a long time and I made a video and I put that video on my website when I first started Flight Junkies. And uh, so if you see a guy with hair in there, that was me, but it was at the Skyway Bridge. There was a little place to fly down there and it's rather small and you need to have some experience fly there. But now I just see a video. Hey, look, I flew under the Skyway Bridge. Well, the FAA gets called here. The FAA gets called there. The FAA gets called here. People are panicky. You know, they see something like that. And they see a guy, an aircraft going under a bridge and this and that. And yeah, you got your YouTube video channel jacked up and you got all those hits on it. And you're getting monetized. But now you just you're, you're encouraging this stupidity for other people to come down. Then they see where you flew from. Then they come down. Then they get hurt or they're doing something stupid just like you were, only now they make an ordinance. And that's why these beaches and that's why these places and that's why these good sites are being shut down. And this is the stuff that I don't like in this sport. You're sneaking YouTube videos out there that, that, that these guys are making are encouraging like-minded people of the same stupidity because it is stupid. It doesn't mean I don't like the person that they're a bad person. I understand they're trying to get followers and they're doing a very good job at it. But you're not thinking about the longevity of the sport. You're encouraging other dudes like you to do this kind of stuff, dude. And then they're not going to pull it off like you did, or they're going to be witnessed by an FAA agent. And pretty soon this whole sport's going to be regulated. It's so nice right now that we can fly this thing under self-regulation. Just use some common sense and don't be stupid. 
Yeah. Because you're ruining it for everybody when you yeah, do we, this. We talk about this all, all the time on, on the show. We're episode 111. And it's something that we're, it's very site preservation, uh, not getting stuff shut down. You know, we've had a, a few incidences where uh, airports have decided, yep, yeah, we're not having, sorry, no ultralight, nothing. And it, and it ruins it for everyone. It does. It is something that we, uh, we definitely consider and something that uh, I, I agree. Absolutely. A hundred percent. We're at seven o'clock mark. I really appreciate everybody. That's uh, that's been a part of the show. Uh, I told you it was one hour. It flew by, didn't it? It did. It really did. I didn't even know if we were going to have anything to talk about for an hour. He, he said, what are we going <laughs> to talk about? He was on the phone. He's like, oh, an hour. I don't know what, I mean, that flew by. So about- <laughs> if you're in the chat, you're one of the Patreon supporters and you would like to join the after show, you can do that uh, by just sending your information just uh, in the description there or in the uh, live chat, just put your email link you have to be a patreon supporter but if you put that in there i'll send you an invite to the after show maybe you want to hang out for a few minutes and um uh we're going to go to the after show really appreciate you being on the show uh kurt and also jill thank you i'm excited to see uh your videos coming soon i'm sure that uh uh, kurt will uh, post that for everyone and um i'm excited to uh to uh, see you guys at eventually at some flying or something like that. I'm well, sure we're going to have, we have the flight junkies reunion every year. And uh, the, if they go to my website, flightjunkies.com, they can check out the dates for that. Um, we had last year was the first year we skipped. They can come there and uh, uh, fly with us. We'd love to have it. We, we lay all differences aside at the events. I don't like drama and I don't like all that. And every year I invite even my nemesis to, to come out. I give them a call or an email or a text and I say, come on out. And uh, we just lay everything aside. We love people, man. We don't we don't hate them. I don't like some of the things that people do, but uh, we love to have them see them at our fly-in. That's up in Newton Falls, Ohio, 30 acres, camping out, good food. I usually feed them on Friday and Saturday night under the tent. I usually have some good bands come in and play for us. So we're going to be doing that this year. And they need to check about a, a, a few weeks before to make sure that the weather was good and that we didn't cancel out. And they can update that on my website at flightjunkies.com. Derek uh, asked a question just before we go. Uh, do you fly with a reserve? I don't fly with a reserve. I really honestly don't. I don't fly in conditions that do it. And I believe, uh, and most of my flying is low, but uh, it, it's not a bad thing to fly with a reserve. I've had seen people have accidental deployments more than I have, uh, than I've seen uh, their use of one. But in a good beginner to intermediate glider, uh, we're not flying in thermal, so they usually reinflate faster than you can even look up at them. They're already flying again. I personally, I don't use one, but then again, uh, I don't wear a helmet when I drive my motorcycles. I've been a biker my whole life, so it's kind of preference for that. Um, I have a strong faith in God, so you can't threaten me with heaven, so I'm hey, not worried hey, about it. <laughs> what's, what's your favorite glider, and, and do you um, how do you feel about reflex gliders? Uh, you know, we have a reflex glider called the Ramaflex. I love the way it flies. It's kind of a it's kind of a, a, a hybrid. Uh, I'm not. I'm not so big in the reflex. I I just enjoy flying my beginner to intermediate glider more than I fly anything, and I do all sorts of stuff that I love to do on that. Um, I, I obviously I sell the two brands that I do because I like the way that they fly, and I don't get caught up into the whole. Hey, what wing do you fly? Oh yeah, mine's way better. I fly the new you know, Jambo seven, you know, and I got down payment on the Jambo eight coming out there. You know, I just don't get into that kind of thing. Um, I fly my beginner to intermediate gliders more than I fly my Ramaflex. Um, but if I want speed or if I'm going to be flying to something and foot launching and to be flying and I need to get somewhere fast, I'll throw on a tight wing and, and put it in reflex mode. But I, I like, I like the products that we sell. It's kind of hard for me to say something about somebody else's product. There's a lot of great products out there. There's also a lot of crappy ones, you know, that as well. But there are a lot of great wings out there. Just so many wing manufacturers out there to say anything about. But I've chosen a couple that I really like. I like their safety. I like their stability. And for people coming into the sport, they really need safety and and that all. Uh, they don't need something that's twitchy and doesn't want to recover if they ever should be stupid enough to fly in something that's going to give them a collapse. But again, I've never seen a collapse in all this time. So wait a I'm second. I just I- did. I just see Linda Anderson gave a hundred dollars. Looks wow. like, yeah. That's my mom. I think yep. so. She she could have just sent that to she could have just sent that to me in the mail. I'd appreciated that. Yeah, give her my <laughs> address. That was my inheritance. She's giving it to me early. 
Thanks, mom. She's by the way, she's the PR person for the show. So she Hi. she she works in the shadows of of, of the show, and and uh, she keeps still, me in line. Still loves her baby. That's right. Like she right still loves her baby. Mommy still loves her baby. <laughs> That's right. She's she's already sent you a requisition for that back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did. She's in a bill already. So I I almost there's a question here now I can't get back to it. Oh, here he goes. I'm just curious why you teach with a strap on your hip like who or what might you need to shoot up well oh i see the uh oh that's a troller strap. yeah yeah nice. that's okay $5. yeah I wear... that was a good troll five dollars yeah, that was a good troll that's yeah. awesome that's five dollars you know i'm gonna answer that question i'm american and i can and it's my right to carry a gun and i exactly. enjoy my freedom of having that second amendment and i'm going to continue to carry my gun it's just that sometimes i forget to take it off when i'm making a video because when i'm on my private airfield and everywhere i go i have a gun and I like it. Heck yeah. Boom. Oh, I see. Yeah. I like that. Oh, that's a trailer. G, yeah, yeah. G yeah. word, Robert. Uh, that was a good troll. All right. Here. Somebody's watching the YouTube stream and hasn't had mute on. JP, put your American on mute. Mute yeah. yourself, JP. Got a mute. I enjoy my freedom of having that second There Boom. we go. <laughs> all right. We're going to go to the after show. Thanks, guys. Appreciate all the sponsors of the show. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, had a great time thanks again and uh next week we're gonna have a great show max marion is gonna be on the show and cue the round of applause it's gonna be a good time he's a former uh champion for the uh, most infinite tumbles ever so it'll be a great time you don't want brother to i'm gonna check out of here i got stuff to do and we just got okay. back from this funeral so i can't yeah. stay with you but god bless thanks for having me on i really Kurt, appreciate it really appreciate it man thank you so much god bless you thank man. you good night bye-bye